Welcome to Finances Do Matter. My name is Richard and this is our regular weekly financial and markets update. And happy Easter to you all. Now I have a confession to make. While most people will be eating Easter eggs, galaxy chocolate is what I shall be eating. Now I will confess. For those who may remember I was on a diet just prior to Christmas and I did actually lose two stone or 28 pounds but I have put a stone of that back on primarily because it's very difficult to keep a diet going indefinitely however I'm still a stone down or 14 pounds compared to what I used to be but now once again I've got another two stone really to lose so let's see how well I achieve that. Meanwhile, gold has been skyrocketing. Silver has been going up too. And we've seen growth rates of between 10 and 11% in March. And yet, I still feel we have much further to go. So let's take a quick look at the figures. What's been affecting the gold and silver market? And then I'll comment at the end as to where I'm expecting prices to reach this coming week. Now, as you can see, gold has risen $67 this past week, some 3%, and closed at $2,233. It's been as low as 2,164 and as high as 2,238. What's noticeable, if you look at the graph here, is that gold closed very close to its high. In sterling terms, similar pattern, up nearly 50 pounds, 1,770 pounds. And in euros, same pattern, up 66 euros at 2,071 euros. Silver is up 1%, or 28 cents, at $24.98. Did go as high as 25.23? and has been as low as 24.35. Yes, we had this little blip here, <laughs> quite a significant rise with silver falling back, but if you look at the trend, it too is closing near its high. In sterling terms, up 19 pence at 19 pounds and 81 pence, and in euros, it's up 0 0.30 euros at 23.18 euros. Cryptocurrency prices, Bitcoin, 70,474, that's up some $5,000 on the week. Now, if we look at equities, now these figures here are what happened on Friday. But on the week, the Dow is up 332 points at 39,807. The S&P is up 20 points at 5,254. And the NASDAQ is down 49 points at 16,379. But the NASDAQ did perform extremely well the week before. And the FTSE index, like the other European stock markets, are up at 7,952. That's up 22 points on the week. Looking at oils, heading higher, I'm afraid, and this is going to have an impact again on inflation. Brent crude at $87 is up some $1.57. And WTI crude at 83.17 is up $2.54. The dollar index is broadly the same as last week, or closed the same as last week at 104.48. It's up just 0.05 points on the week, as I say, virtually unchanged. Looking at the economic calendar, we said look out for Tuesday consumer confidence, which came in lower than anticipated at 104.7 against market expectations of 106.5, but then very similar to the February figures. And we said, look for the PCE index. Now, interestingly, the PCE index came in at 0.3%. The market had envisaged slightly higher at 0.4, so it's done better. However, the previous month's figure was upgraded by 0.1%. Now, this gives us a PCE index of 2.5%, exactly what the market anticipated. The core PCE, which is what the market focuses on more, came in at 0.3 as per expectations. But once again, the January figures were upgraded by 0.1% to 0.5. 
And this has meant the core PCE is 2.8%. The Fed chair, Jerome Powell, has basically said, we expected this, nothing really to worry about. We're on track. This coming week, we have some interesting news. We have both manufacturing PMIs coming out on Monday, factory orders and US auto sales on Tuesday. On Wednesday, the ADP employment report, which tends to give a guide, it's not a guarantee, but a guide as to the Friday's non-farm payrolls, which we'll look at in the moment. And we have the ISM services and the S&P final services PMIs. So we'll have both manufacturing and services PMIs this coming week. Thursday, numerous governors and Fed presidents will be speaking. And on Friday, the all-important non-farm payrolls. I like to look at consumer credit too. I think it has a bearing, but the major impact is going to be this figure. And it's envisaged that for March, 200,000 new jobs will be created against 275,000 the month before. Watch out for any revisions. They will be interesting to observe. And of course, they're expecting the unemployment rate to fall to 3.8 compared with 3.9%. And hourly wages to fall to 0.3. When I say fall, I mean the growth rate is fallen compared to 0.4. Let's see if this happens. Again, could be a bit of a changer as far as the market is concerned. Now, last week, my forecast for gold and silver was pretty spot on. And we saw their prices trade within the ranges that I recommended. Now, this coming week is going to be an interesting one because technically we should see a little bit of consolidation. That's normally what the market expects before then another leg up. However, much depends on the data that is being announced this coming week and how good or how bad it is. Now, I have to admit, I did get the impression the market got a little bit ahead of itself on Friday because although the PC data was as anticipated, the fact that the rate was higher the previous month, in other words, they undertook a revision, should have perhaps told market dealers, traders, brokers and gamblers, should perhaps have told them, oh, hang on a moment, this inflation's not quite as good as we envisage. And particularly if we note that the trend, the underlying trend, is marginally up. That said, Fed Chair Jerome Powell has said, not a problem, it's what we're expecting, and we are still on target. Well, we're not going to reach 2%, in my view, until at least the end of the year, more than likely next year. So it does look to me as if the Fed may perhaps allow for a little bit of consolidation of the inflation rate somewhere between two and a half or 2.2 to two and a half percent and will then expect it to continue to fall later in the year early into next year however they have said that there may very well be three interest rate cuts this year in which case i can't really see inflation falling that much further now where am I going to see gold and silver this week? I think there should be some consolidation. However, there does seem to be quite a tailwind pushing gold and silver higher. Particularly if you bear in mind that central banks are buying gold, particularly China, Poland and Singapore. And on top of that, we have geopolitical uncertainty. We have people moving to safe haven assets and even though we've got a strong US dollar, people are still attracted to precious metals, which normally isn't the case. So if that dollar value were to fall a little, we could see both gold and silver really shoot up. What's going to happen this week? Well, no one has an absolute crystal ball, but my forecast is that gold is going to trade somewhere between $2,200 and $2,300, with perhaps it could go down to 2175 if the figures are not as good as anticipated but could equally go up to 2350 if they are much better than anticipated silver 2425 to 2625 with 24 perhaps being the bottom 
and 2650 being the absolute top. Equity markets, again, depending on the figures, could have further to rise, and crypto markets, just the same. That's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm going back to eating my chocolate. Meanwhile, thank you so much for listening. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, press the bell sign. Have a great Easter. See you soon.